Hi, Ahmed. Thank you for your essays. Now let's have a look at the essay about extending business hours first. Okay. Experts from both the developed and developing countries have debated whether extending business hours in almost every day of the week um, is a positive development or if it is a negative one. Okay. Okay. Uh, you ha if you have the weather, right, you don't need the second if because that's basically the same, the same thing. So you can say whether extending business hours almost every day of the week is a positive development or a negative one. And there you go. You see, you save yourself some words. In my own opinion, I believe, okay, uh, you either keep one or the other because uh, you are saying the same thing, being redundant, and being redundant doesn't add you points uh, in anything, especially in vocabulary. Okay, in my own opinion, um, increasing the working hours comes with several benefits. Beautiful, okay. You can go on and say which are one and two, or uh, keep it as a secret. Well, I'm a fan of announcing the main arguments in a very summarized form, but again, it's up to you. The session will discuss both sides using examples from the Forbes magazine, from the Forbes magazine, I don't need to capitalize, and a study conducted in Nigeria to demonstrate points and support arguments. Beautiful. On the one hand, there is ample evidence that supports the notion that extending business hours is beneficial, that extending whose business hours? shops business hours, or let's say marketplaces business hours. The central reason behind this is twofold. Firstly, shops that are open for a longer period than normal undeniably, undeniably uh, generate more profit in sales compared to other stores. Yes, okay, how about developing this? Okay, develop, example. Secondly, this act causes uh, stores to gain popularity, uh, which in turn helps attract new customers. Beautiful. Take, for example, a study conducted by Forbes magazine. Uh, again, or you can say by the For by Forbes magazine, by the Forbes magazine. You know, I'm lost. Oh, by Forbes magazine. Yeah, I don't think you know, we need the article. Yeah. Yes. Uh, which reveal that stores that allowed cost okay, stores here and stores here. Synonyms, right? Synonyms and stores and shops and, okay, we need synonyms and I know that you don't have many, uh, you can say shopping malls, right? You can say shopping establishments, look at that, shopping establishments. It allow customers to gain access to their shops for an increased amount of time in a day than a standard, have a 25% increase in sales compared to other stores, okay? Uh, to other stores. Therefore, it is conclusively clear that increasing uh, the opening time uh, provides the provides a number of benefits. Great. You have just uh, okay, 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 okay. This is more profit. And how about the popularity? Okay, you have developed and exemplified the first one. Then, okay, I'm taking this. And, 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 and I'm putting it here, okay? Because this is the support, it, this is the support for the first argument, right? For generates more profit. Uh, how about attracting the new customers? Any examples, any um, explanations there? On the other hand, some may argue that working overtime may put a lot of pressure on employees and thereby cause cause, right, because you have a model here, some may argue that it may put, so, uh, and it may cause stress, which in turn can affect both their physical and mental health, absolutely. In other words, the work-life balance could be significantly disturbed, okay, again, you can say the work-life balance of, of those who are forced to work or who have nothing but to work um, extra hours could be significantly disturbed, I like your vocabulary. For example, recent studies conducted in Nigeria revealed that employees working over 50 hours a week are generally more stressed and susceptible to chronic health diseases. Uh, no, chronic diseases. Well, when we say chronic diseases, of course we refer to health. We don't refer to computer viruses, right? 
compared to the people who stick to the recommended 40 hours a week. A week. Okay, stick to is a very informal way of saying that. How would you say that in a more academic way? I would say maintain the standard schedule or timetable of 40 hours a week. I would say it like that. How would you? Consequently, it is possible to state that the largest drawback from prolonging business hours, beautiful, is that it may be detrimental to our health. Um, if you start with the perspective they, I mean the workers, the employees, the whoever, someone is the third person, uh, then don't you, don't you just go back to the our health perspective, to we. We, who are we? Are we the employers? Are we the employees? Are we the customers? Because if you say our health, I kind of think of myself as a customer, not as a worker, you know? So um, I would uh, rethink this. From the argument and examples given, I firmly believe that the pros from extending business hours outweigh the cons. How about uh, some emphasis? You can say they do outweigh the cons, or you can say certainly or no doubt no doubt outweigh the cons. Um, if I were you, I would use the do because it shows a better range of grammar than using the emphasis um, um, by um, employing uh, adverbs, right? This is more advanced grammar. This is because not only does it draw, not only does it draw more attention to the store, but it also contributes to an increase in sales. Thus, it could be predicted that in the near future, countries from across the globe will eventually adopt this prospect. Okay, uh, this practice. Practice, not pro uh, prospect. A prospect is something that you think will happen in the future. For example, you know, I don't like the prospect. It looks like it's going to rain. I'm actually looking outside the window now. You wouldn't believe me. Um, it looks like it's going to rain. I'm, I don't like the the prospect of uh, going home um, sopping wet, something like this, right? I don't like the idea from the future. So yes, great uh, essay. Uh, perhaps you could try and uh, take the vocabulary up a notch, right? For example, I like the the way you use words like detrimental, susceptible to chronic diseases, what else? Um, um, not only does it draw and so on and so forth, it could be predicted, I think you remembered my suggestion, uh, but other vocabularies is nice, neat, accurate, but not very sophisticated. So try and read more sophisticated texts of, in a similar style uh, and uh, you will see how your vocabulary will uh, become more complex but still very um, topical. Now let's have a look at the um, line graph about rainfall. The graph illustrates the rainfall in units in, in milliliters, okay, in three countries, England, Scotland, and Wales. Uh, let's not offend Wales. Wales. In the year uh, 2018, okay. Overall, the amount of rainfall in all three countries showed a fluctuating trend. Beautiful. Just put the sentence where it belongs in the introduction. You cannot have two introductions, like the, the, the big one and the small one. No, all belongs in the introduction. In the first seven months, and uh, before you go, we go on, um, you can actually stick to the uh, uh, word formulation, right? Seven months. Scotland and Wales precipitation levels, levels, because there are two countries, so you really have to separate the two levels, right? You have two lines there on the gra graph for Scotland and for Wales. Peaked at about the same quantity at around this much in, Mar in March and July, respectively. Peaked about uh, the same quantity, the same amount. Okay. However, England reached its maximum, its maximum at a level slightly under the 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 under the one the other two countries showed showed, and namely at about this much. Conversely, in this same period, and why is this capitalized? In this same period, these countries showed a little discrepancy in terms, uh, okay, you have showed here, I'm going to change my word, registered, in terms of their minimum amount of rainfall. You know what I love about your style, Ahmed? Um, the complexity. I mean, you sound very complex and very academic in your task one. Why don't we do the same in task two, okay? 
uh, conversion discrepancy. Look at this, this showed discrepancy. Both Scotland and Wales share the same figure. However, this was in different months. Um, okay, and you need a column here. February for Scotland, comma, and April for Wales. Beautiful. No one mentioned this before. This is beautiful. With regards to England's lowest rainfall, rainfall what? Quantity amount level. This was about 70 uh, milliliters in mid-May. Okay, good. In the final five months, Wales rainfall, Wales, Pajasek, plateaued, beautiful, between August and November, and later rose in the, you need the article, subsequent months. Beautiful. You have a talent for task one, I should say. And this is not an easy task. I mean, this line graph, which is, looks like a, a, a tangled ball of yarn, um, this is a difficult task. So you are doing a brilliant job. Although, after this point, it declined finishing the period, um, concluding, concluding the period at an estimate uh, of this much. Interestingly, Scotland started the period in January with the most rainfall, however, at the end, uh, if you have however here, you need the semicolon. Uh, you can use the however between commas only when you say something like this. Uh, Let's say everyone thinks that Olympics are not necessary. I, comma, however, comma, think different, right? So you can use it only this way. Uh, but if you have however between two independent clauses, the way you have it here, you need um, a semicolon uh, on the left and a comma on the right. No, a semicolon before and a comma after. However, at the end of the period, in December, it dropped and was behind England. Okay, great, great, great. I only have a feeling that you have too many words. 192 words. Uh, 192, your, your minimum is 150. If you do 200, okay, okay. But try not to write too much, right? Because uh, there are people who tend to write too much. Okay, great job, great job. Overall, your vocabulary complex range uh, and even accuracy is much better in task one. Uh, I should, I, I can see that you're using the standard formulas that we we provided, but um, again, they maybe I'm wanting, maybe I <laughs> I demand too much, but again. Um, challenge yourself and ask yourself, do I know a more sophisticated expression that fits this context? Can I fix these uh, repeats? Uh, anyway, great job. Keep up the great work and all the best.